Hello guys, you welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about elasticity of a material, like you can see on the book. Elasticity. Now, what is elasticity? You all understand what we call material, like we have different types of materials. But majorly today we are going to be talking about solid material. And when they say solid materials, materials that their molecules are well packed together, that is they are rigid in nature. When they say material is rigid, it means when you shake that material, the molecules will not leave its main position. Now, let's take for instance that I have this material with me here, and I call it solid like it's solid. Okay? If I take uh, the measurement of uh, this material, I have it to be eight and a half, like you can see on the screen. Now, let's see what will happen if I apply force to this material. You can see, when I apply force to this material, you see that the length increase to 13. So you can see the length increase to what? 13. Now see what happens when I remove the force. You can see that it goes back to the original length it is. Now, any material that has the ability to regain its original shape or size after deformation, because when you apply force to a substance, that substance tends to deform. So, any material that deforms when you apply force to it and also regain its original shape or size after you remove the force, that material is said to be an elastic material. Now, you agree with me that all substances, they are all elastic material. Okay? I believe you doubt that. Now, let's look into it now and uh, we get it out that every substance, they are what? Elastic material. Now, before I go on, I would like to take the definition of elasticity again. Elasticity is the ability of a material to regain its original shape or size after deformation or after the removal of what? Force. Now, let's take for instance that I have a substance like this and uh, the length of this substance is L0. And I have another substance like this. Sorry, let's say this is the same substance like this, when, when there's no force on it. Now, when I apply force on it, let's say I apply mass M on this substance. So, immediately I apply mass M on this substance, the length increase to this. So, this length, let's call it L. The initial length is called L0, and the new length that we have after applying mass is given as what? L. If you look at this now, you see that this one is what is quite longer than this. Now, what happened is that this material deformed as a result of what? Of this force that you applied on it. So, if I remove this force, if this material is an elastic material, it tends to what? To go back to its equilibrium position. Now, let's quickly understand something. For every material, there exists the following point in order for you to determine their elasticity. So we have the point called proportional, proportional, proportional limit. And we have another point called elastic point or elastic limit. Let's call it elastic limit. This same elastic limit is known as yield point. Yield point, look, we have the proportional limit. We have the elastic limit, or what we call the yield point. We also have the maximum point. The maximum point. And uh, we have another point called breaking the breaking point now for all materials there exists what the following point of them now let's see how it goes when you have proportional what proportional limits for a material any material that you have like this provided that what the proportional limit is not exceeded are you getting this now when you apply force to that substance, the material tends to do what? To regain its original shape or size after you remove the force. But 
if the material, if the force causes the material to go beyond this proportional what limit, what happens is that the material will get to its elastic what elastic limit, which we refer to as yield point. Though when the material gets to that yield point, the material will still regain back shape, but not exactly like it was before. Now, when what when you keep on applying force to the material, the material will get to a point known as maximum point. As at that time, if you look at what I'm holding now, if I apply force to it, I see it's more or less I've, I've, I've applied the whole of the force on this material, but it's no longer what extending. That point is known as maximum point. The point whereby further application of force does not bring about what further extension. Now, immediately after this point, there is a point called what breaking point. If I keep on applying force to this substance, it will get to a stage whereby the material will damage permanently. At that point, at which the, man the, the material deform permanently, that point is known as what breaking point. Now, let's take a look at something now. You know, when I apply force to an elastic material, what happens is that what it extends. Now, let us plot the graph of extension. Let's plot the graph of force against our extension in order to simplify the whole of this property and we tend to understand new thing about this particular point on elastic material. Now, if I have a graph like this, when you plot the graph of force against extension, at first, you are going to have a straight line graph and later, the graph is going to digress from what? From being straight. Now, if you look at this now, if I call this point, point A, and I call this point, point B, now I'll call here point C. Now, from this point to this point here, that is where we call the proportional what? Limit. If you look at the graph, you see that we have a straight line graph. It's because the proportional limit is not what? Exceeded. Immediately after the proportional limit, we have what? The elastic limit where you find the graph what? Bringing about curve. is no longer straight. That's to tell you that the material is no longer obeying a certain law known as Hooke's law, which we are going to discuss as we move. Okay, now, from here to this place, this is maximum point, as this place is what? Our yield point, which we call the elastic limit. This point is maximum point. Between the maximum point and the breaking point, the material is no longer an elastic material, but it has become a plastic. So, when material fails to obey what? Hooke's law, that material is no longer an elastic material, but it has become what? A plastic. So, a plastic does not obey what? Hooke's law. So, that's that about what? About the graph. Now, look at something now. The particular law that will tell you if a material is still what, an elastic material or not, is what we regard as Hooke's law. Now, when you talk about Hooke's law, what is Hooke's law? Okay, let's quickly talk about that. If I apply force to this material, you see that immediately I apply force to it, the material what? Extend. So, what Hooke's law simply states is that Hooke's law states that the force applied to an elastic material is directly proportional to its extension, provided that what its elastic limit is not exceeded. I see the clause is there. So if you are applying what a force to an elastic material, the more force you apply, the more the material do what extend until the elastic limit is what exceeded. So once the elastic limit is exceeded, the material will no longer what? Obey Hooke's law. That is, further application of force will not cause what? Further extension. Now, let's look at it now. If Hooke's law states that the force applied to an elastic material 
is directly proportional to its extension. So let's say E is the extension and F is the what? The applied force. You know, if I'm going to remove the, this proportional, the, the proportional what? The proportional sign, I'm going to introduce what? I'm going to introduce an equality sign and a constant. So, if you remove this proportional sign, I will have F to equal what? KE. So, if I have that F equal KE, this K is known as force constant. What I call it? Force constant. Now, I will explain what we call force constant. Now, let's look at it. If I have that F equal what? KE. This is what we refer to as Hooke's law, guys. Now, if F equal KE, this K is force over what? Extension. What it simply means is that the force, okay, let me take it like this so that you understand what I'm saying. Take, for instance, if I have a material like this, and the force constant for this material is 20 Newton per meter. If the force constant for this material is 20 newton per meter, what it simply means is that I need a force of 20 newton to extend this body to what? By 1 meter. Get it clear now. If I'm going to extend this body through 1 meter, I need what? A force of 20 newton. If I want to extend this to what? 2 meter, I need a force of what? 40 newton. Because the force constant of this material is 20 newton per meter. So if I don't have a force that is up to 20 newton, I will not be able to extend this what, this particular material up to 1 meter. In, in a nutshell, we can define a force constant as what? A unit force that will cause what? A unit extension on an elastic material. So... Force constant is a unit force that will cause what? A unit extension on an elastic material. So let's take a look at that. I believe we understand that now. So if K is equals to what? F over E, this is in what? Newton meter. Because extension is measured in meter. Why force is measured in what? Newton. So I believe we understand that now. Now, let's proceed to what else we need to understand about what Hooke's law. Now, this particular law that we have here is talking about a solid material randomly. Let's take for instance that the solid material I'm talking about now is a string. That is, I have a string here now. So, and I apply force to this string. You know, when I apply force to this string, what happens is that the string is served to do what? To extend so the extension of the string you can't take it easily because immediately the string extend what happened again is that what there is a certain force that is going to pull it back so the force you applied is pulling what the string towards this side and another force is pulling it what in the backward direction so you can pause the video now and tell me that force that is what pulling this in the backward direction while we continue the class. Okay, fine. If this is an applied force, the force that is pulling the body backward is known as a restoring force. A restoring what? Force. Until we have what? This body at equilibrium before we can take what? The measurement for the extension of the body. Now look at something. If I have that F equal KE, how am I going to know if this is on a string or it is on a solid material? That is a solid material that is not a string. It's very simple. I'll have this to be F equal negative what? KE. So when you have F equal negative KE, this shows that this particular force here is a restoring what? Is a restoring force. And that is the significance of the negative because it's moving in the 
opposite direction to the applied force. So you can have the Hooke's law stated as what? F equal what? Negative KE. So the K there shows you that this force is a restoring force, not the applied force. Okay? If you are with me now, I, I believe we can move on now. Now let's look at something else. If you have a material like this, and the length is L0, and I apply force to that material that makes the material to extend to this level, I have this as my new length. For me to know the, the, the extent of this extension, what I need to do is to take what the change in length to be new length minus the initial length. And this is what we call the extension. So if extension is the same thing as what? New length minus initial length. I can say F is K into bracket what? L minus L naught. Or I say L is K delta what? L. So when you see expression like F equal K delta L, and you see expression like F equal K E, it's still the same thing. Because extension simply means what? The difference between new length and what? The old length. I believe we understand this. If yes, let's understand what happened here. When you apply force to this material and it extends, what is that called? Now, I would like you to consider these two cylinder. If I have this. Let's say the length of the cylinder is L and the area of the cylinder is A. If this is one and I have another one here, so I have the area of this one to be A also and I have this to be L. Now, when you talk about elasticity, elasticity does not only talk about extension but also talk about compression. So for you to understand that elasticity also talk about compression and extension, we are going to look at two terms which we refer to as stress and the uh, strain. So when you talk about stress, if I have that stress, the stress on the material is the force applied divided by what? The area. And the strain of a material is the extension over what? The original length of the material. So when you have the extension divided by the original length, what you have there is strain. And when you have stress, which is force over area, what we call it is stress. But when I have it like this, stress and I have strain. This stress is a what? Is a compressive one. Are we together? It means what? You compress what the body. If the, if the let's say this length is what is twenty centimeter now, for instance, you now compress it such that it become what ten centimeter. So if I'm to talk about the ratio of the force applied to this body, I don't know the force applied to this body to its what to its area, which we refer to as stress. Such stress is going to be what a compressive what stress. And also, I can also consider strain in that manner. But if a strain is going to be a compressive strain, then I'm going to have my strain to be negative delta L over L naught. So when you see strain that is negative, you should know that it's talking about what? Compression, not extension this time around. But if your strain is positive, then it's extension. Now watch. If I have stress equal F over A, which we refer to as area, I would like you to note some certain point here now. What happened is that this stress is a compressive one. Know that first. Now, we've known that strain is said to be compressive if the result is negative. How are we then going to know if a stress is what is extensive? Since we know that when you have stress like this, it's compressive. Now, if I have the word like tensile 
if I said tensile stress, tensile stress, which is force over area, this tensile shows that it is what? It is an extens extension, not compressive now. It extends instead of what? Instead of it to compress. So tensile stress is not the same thing as what? Stress. So when you talk about extension, we call it tensile stress. When you talk about stress, you call it what? Compression. So, I haven't said that. When you increase the area of a substance, the stress on that material will reduce. That is, if I have a substance whose area is 20 centimeters square, and I have another substance that has what? 40 centimeters square. The stress on A is said to be greater than that of what? That of B. Because the higher the area, the lower the stress. So for you to increase the stress on the material, you need to increase the force and decrease the area. So it's either you decrease the area and increase the force or keep the area constant while you increase what? The force. So now let's look at the ratio of stress to strain. So if I have that stress divided by what? Strain. This will give us a quantity known as the Young modulus. So some material will denote it with Y. Some material will denote it with Y, M. Y sum will denote it with E. So any of the two, if I see stress over strain and I have it as E, is the same thing as what? Young modulus. Now, what are we going to use Young Modulus for, or what can you use Young Modulus to describe? Understand something, when the Young Modulus of a substance increase, it shows that that material is a strong material. And when you have a strong material, for a strong material to last, it will be difficult. So, that's to tell you that, when the material has a very strong young modulus, that is the young modulus is high, the stress for that material to extend will also be high. So, if I now increase the length, because I would like you to get something clear now. You remember, stress is given as force over area, and strain is given as extension over the original length. Now watch. If I take the ratio of these two, I will have my young modulus to be I'm going to have my young modulus to be if I take this, okay, let's do something. We always call it fa fa nye nye. So if I have F over A, then extension over original length. So mathematically, you know, what I'm supposed to do is to say F over A divided by E over L naught. Abi, then I change this one to multiplication by taking the reciprocal of this one. But what if I don't want to do that? I can just say fa fa nye nye. So I'm just going to have that my young modulus is F L naught over what? A E. So if I have this, it's going to give me the same result as what this will give me. So because if I take this one upside down now, force F times what L naught, and I will have this. So the same thing. Okay, now let's look at something now. You know, this is a meter square, and this one is a what? Meter. So automatically, this and this can cancel. So this one will remain what? Meter. But remember, this one is also measured in what? Meter. So meter times meter back to meter square. In the nutshell, let's say meter of this cancel what? The meter of this. So I have what? Meter square left. And I have this one to be in Newton. So my results will be in what? Newton per meter square. So Young modulus is also measured in Newton per meter square. So that's that about what? About the young modulus of an elastic material. So it tells you the extent of what? Of the strongness of the material. Now, let's quickly look at something which is very, very important about elasticity. Look at it here. If I have this body here like this, 
pay attention, please. And I have that the body now extends to this extent, if this is new length and this is the L knot. For this body to move from here to this place, work done is taking place here automatically. This particular body must have either lose or gain some certain energy before it can extend to this level. Now get something clear now. We need to understand the energy stored in an elastic material. Because that energy, you know, energy is the ability to do work. So if work is done on this material automatically, it has utilized some energy. Now let's take for instance now that the average, let's say the work done on this material is given as what? The average force. Average what? Average force times the extent, you know, work done is force times distance. So the distance this body covers happens to be what? The extension. Abi? So that is average force times what? The extension. So we have that work done. Work done is equivalent to energy because if there's no energy, work cannot be done. So the ability to do work is energy. In a nutshell, we have that energy is equals to 1 over 2F times what? Times E. So this is the energy stored in an elastic work material. So the energy stored in an elastic material, we have this. Now let's talk about if, for instance, you're giving a question and you don't have what? The force. You can also express this energy stored in the material in form of what? In form of its force constant. From Hooke's law, we have that F equal what? Ke. So if I substitute this in place of F in this particular equation, I will have that my E is 1 over 2 Ke squared. So I can either have my what? Energy stored in an elastic material to be 1 over 2 Ke squared, or I have it as what? E equal 1 over 2 Fe. Remind you? Energy is measured in joules, so this will be expressed in joules. In a nutshell, Newton meter is equivalent to what we call joules. Okay, if that should be the case, don't let us end the class like that. Let's talk about something else. We have three types of materials, if you can recall. There are some material that you can never toy with, otherwise they will damage. And there are some material that you can do whatever you like with, they would rather be giving you another shape, the more you turn them down. And there are some material that you can use them industrially to make things. So it shows that we can categorize material according to their elasticity in three different what, ways. One, we talk about the brittle material. When you say brittle, it means materials that break easily. They break before they get to their elastic limits. So those are brittle material. Example is your ceramic and others that are in the same category of brittle. So any material that breaks before their elastic limits, they are said to be brittle material. And the other material, we call them malleable material. When you say material is malleable, it shows that that material can be beat to shape. So example is your steel. So you can beat it into any shape you want to form any structure mechanically. And the last one, they are ductile material. So when you say material is ductile, those material that you can draw into wire, they are ductile material. At this junction, we call it a day until we meet while we are talking about some problems on elasticity. Do have a nice day. Thank you.